G'day and welcome back to the channel now. No update on my own situation with CAA at the moment. Don't expect to hear back from them until around about midweek. Uh, they said it would take about a week, so we'll see what happens. But there's been some interesting stuff on the interwebs. And first of all, shout out to Alan Yu. I've mentioned him before. He's got a really good daily vlog. He's a, a, a DJI drone flyer. He flies, a, I think he's got a Mavic and he's got a... Um, Mavic Air, so Air? Yeah, Mavic Mini, Mavic Mini. And he's in Canada, and, but we won't hold that against him. And he just goes out every day, walks in the parks, feeds the squirrels, and gets some drone footage. But he has a pretty good um, perspective on a lot of the news that happens, and he picked this up. So full hats off to, to Alan for spotting this. And it's a, it's a report on the Transport Canada uh, report system, the what is it? I had to write it down because I hadn't heard of it. Civil Aviation Daily Occurrence Reporting System which is C-A-D-O-R-S, CADORS, I suppose you'd call it. Anyway, he found this report very interesting. Let's take a little look at it. Okay, here we go. This is the Transport Canada CADORS report, and there's the number if you want to look it up. But basically, it's a, uh, a an AIRPROX TCAS alert, a loss of separation, mid-air collision. Woo what happened here? Well, it was called an accident. It was actually on the 6th of February this year, so it's a few months ago. It takes a while for these reports to get through the system. Happened at 2200, which is daytime? 2200? Is that the time? Maybe that's UTC, I don't know. Anyway, um, it happened in British Columbia, uh, Pacific region, blah blah. You can read all that, I'm not going to go. It's a class 5, we'll get onto that later. Uh, but basically, the aircraft information, there was a Royal Canadian Mounted Police helicopter, an Aerospecial 350, wasn't it? Aerospecial, yeah, AS350B3, which is a large turbine helicopter. And it had, in fact, we'll go down to the bottom bit here. Alan covers this in his video, so I'll link to that in the description. Go and have a look at it. But basically, the TSB report says an Aerospecial AS350B3 operated by the Royal Canadian Mounted Police Air Services was conducting policing activities 24 nautical miles southwest of Houston, British Columbia. I guess not Texas, but British Columbia. With three persons on board also operating the area were two RCMP operated RPAS units. That's drones to you and I. During low level flight below 300 feet. Now this is the common thread, isn't it? So many of these things happen below 300 feet where we shouldn't have manned aircraft. Honestly, get them out of there. To get them up above 500, that's where they're supposed to be. So, I don't know where the blame lies, but during low level flight, below 300 feet AGL, the helicopter and one RPAS flew a Skyranger R60, that's a 2.4 kilo um, multi rotor. That is not a light craft, that is a big commercial drone, right? So, we weren't talking uh, Phantoms, we weren't talking Mavics, we weren't talking mini quads, we're talking about a commercial drone, something of fairly good heft, 2.4 kilos in American money. I think that's probably around about five and a half, six pounds. So, that's a lot of weight. Anyway, they collided. The helicopter suffered some initial vibration, and the pilot completed a precautionary landing on a road without further incident. Hang on a minute. We were told that if a drone hits a helicopter, people die. Oh, but that, oh, that's right. Then they changed it and said if a drone hits a helicopter's rotors, then people will die. No, and then they said if a drone hits a helicopter's tail rotor, people will die. So let's read on. It says maintenance staff found damage primarily to the main rotor blades. Oh, okay. Along with superficial damage on the tail boom, tail boom and tail rotor. So all that stuff we've been told about drones hitting helicopters causing instant death and devastation. It's bullshit, honestly it is, um, because they haven't done the risk assessment. This is the real world data. This is the evidence which we're seeing increasing amounts of, which say that even if you've got a 2.4 kilo drone and it collides with a helicopter, people don't necessarily die. Okay, anyway, so the affected components were removed as per maintenance manual for repairs or overhaul as required. And then here's the good bit, the RPAS was destroyed and there were no injuries to persons in the aircraft or on the ground. So there we go, RPAS completely destroyed, helicopter largely unaffected, they replaced parts, which is what you do for safety. But it landed safely, no one injured, no one killed. It makes a mockery of all the claims we hear in the media and from the regulators that we have to regulate these drones almost out of the sky. No, what you have to do is make sure helicopters don't come below 500 feet. This wouldn't have happened. Your rules, and this is a great point because at the moment we've got CAA in New Zealand checking to see that I've complied with the rules. And I've said, well, you know what? Rules don't make safety. A safety comes from an understanding of what you're doing, a knowledge of what you're doing, experience, and being able to make good decisions based on the evidence before you. Now, I bet you, you can be almost guaranteed that this was the police, so they wouldn't have broken the rules, would they? Neither the police flying the helicopter nor the police flying the drone would have broken the rules. But 
an accident happened. There was a collision. So as I said, rules do not guarantee safety. I would say that the person flying the drone was probably not sufficiently experienced or didn't have the right skill set or didn't have enough, you know, didn't have the right decision making on the moment at the, you know, at the time on the day. Um, and that's why there was a problem or it may have been the person in the helicopter or whatever it was. It probably wasn't because people didn't follow the rules. So we've proved, we've, we've, we've learned a lot from this incident, this one incident. I didn't see it in the media. I saw it on Alan News channel. What we've learned is helicopters continue to crash into drones or vice versa, and nobody dies. Nobody's even injured. That's not to say that there isn't a risk and we should at all times try and avoid a risk um, if possible, because we don't want to endanger people. But in this case, three people's lives in the helicopter were endangered because the drone and the helicopter tried to use the same piece of airspace at the same time. That's not good. So I'd like to see someone prosecuted, wouldn't you? I mean, someone has to be prosecuted. If someone has been, let's face it, if you or I were flying our drone quite reasonably and legitimately and legally, and a police helicopter came along at 300 feet and smacked into it, do you think we would get away with it? I don't think we would, even if we were following the rules. I think we would still, that overriding rule that says unmanned aircraft must always give way to manned aircraft would have been violated and somebody would be up before the courts or facing a, a hefty fine. So will that happen in this case? <laughs> well, actually, let's take a look. Um, this is, I don't know, Alan covered this. What is this? Class of investigation. This doesn't seem to work with my browser. How do I get in there? Um, anyway, I'll have a look at Alan's video. I've got to send you there because he's got to get full thing. A class five incident means basically, no, well, nothing, nothing to see here, move along. A drone hit a helicopter or vice versa. And they're saying nothing to see, move along. There's nothing to be learned from this. And there's no need to take any action against anybody. <laughs> I'm sorry, but I'm being investigated here in New Zealand for simply flying a drone legally and safely. Uh, but no investigation necessary here when a drone hits a helicopter. But it's because the police were flying it and they cannot be wrong. Um, yeah, I'm concerned. And as Alan very clearly raises in his uh, in his video, we have the situation where in Canada they're looking at reviewing the rules applying, or the, the lack of rules applying to sub 250 craft, even though there have been no incidents at all involving property damage or injury or death involving sub 250 gram drones. The regulators want to revisit this because they don't think it's right that people should be allowed to fly drones with just some simple guidance such as don't injure people, and don't endanger their property. That's, that's, no, that's not good enough. Got to have more rules. I think, as does Alan Yu, that the regulators should be focused on the things that are really causing problems. People using big drones without necessary experience, knowledge or understanding to do so safely, as was the case in this incident. I'm sorry, but Transport Canada, stop trying to mop up the bar in the Titanic while there's an iceberg coming through the wall or people will die. Leave the Sub 250 alone. Sub 250 has proven to be totally safe, 100% safe without all your prescriptive rules. But even the police can't fly their commercial drones without whacking into helicopters. So go and deal with the real problems and don't start chasing the low hanging fruit. The people like myself who go out there and fly and someone gets a bee in their bonnet and they report it. What's the point of investigating me for flying safely when you've got people like the police flying dangerously? I'm sorry, really Transport Canada, get your act sorted. And this applies to all regulators around the world. You're all engaging in massive regulatory overreach. If the fact that we're being told time and time again that these drones are going to bring down aircraft, they're going to bring down helicopters, but they don't, clearly shows that you don't have a grasp on the scale or scope of the problem. You haven't done your risk assessment. There is plenty of information out there. It grows every day. In fact, look at this little piece of video here on the YouTubes, which shows someone finally flew an aircraft into a drone. They didn't turn a drone into a cannonball and fire it at a, at a part of an airframe. They flew an aeroplane into a drone and there was a scuff on the paint. I'll put a link to this video in my description as well, because you need to go and have a look at that if you haven't seen it already. And then they did something even more exciting. They flew a drone through the propeller of this aircraft. And I've seen people saying, oh, yeah, that's not a real world test. The engine was just idling and you know, the, whatever. Um, but that's a really important test. And I'll tell you why. Because if you're flying in a front engine plane like a Cessna 172 or just about any light aircraft, you've got this spinning propeller up front and it is doing a really good job of clearing the way for you. Now, Drones, as you can see in the video that I, I, I've just mentioned, drones get totally destroyed. And there's another video too showing a, a smaller GA aircraft where a drone flies in the propeller. And in each case, the drone is just completely destroyed into tiny little fragments, tiny little fragments, because drones are very, what we call frangible. They fly apart into millions of pieces, plastic smashes into tiny pieces. And those pieces tend to fly away from the propeller, not through it. 
So if you're flying along in a, in a light aircraft and a drone gets in your way and you fly into it, that propeller is actually going to do a pretty good job of turning that drone into dust and therefore, unlike birds, because there are plenty of videos of birds flying through propellers and going into the cockpits of aircraft, because birds aren't frangible. If you hit a bird with a propeller, it doesn't fly into millions of pieces. It might get chopped in half, but you've still got two big pieces coming through your windscreen. Drones are a whole different proposition. They will f fly into millions or thousands or hundreds of small pieces, none of which on their own are really going to cause you a great deal of death or injury. So drones are safer than birds, but we still have this fixation on drones. And again, let me make it very clear. Manned aircraft should not be below 500 feet. If we fly our drones above 400 feet, all hell breaks loose and people have heart attacks and bureaucrats get all excited. But regularly, time and time again, we've got these manned aircraft flying below 500 feet where they shouldn't be and nobody seems to give a damn. So what do you do? I don't know. Um, in fact, I noticed with the, remember I put a video up with that helicopter flying over my house. Um, the day after I went round the back of my house and the prop wash from the, or the, the rotor wash from that helicopter actually blew my fence over. I've got a pretty rickety fence, it was always a bit dodgy, but there was enough rotor wash to blow the fence over. Seriously, so that helicopter did cause damage. Mind you, my fence has been rotting for years, so it's not a big deal, but I mean, there you go. There was an actual damage caused by a helicopter being operated below the 500 foot minimum, but my drones have never damaged anything. So there we go, that's it. So yeah, um, just an update and just, I think we all need to see that. As I say, go and watch Alan's video. He does a very good job, probably better than me, in presenting this information and his perspective on it. And go and have a look at that video, if you haven't seen it, of the, uh, the Russian plane crashing into a drone. And why is that important? Because, well, when an aircraft is moving forward, you have boundary layer over the wings and things. It's not, if you have a static aircraft and you fire a drone at it, you don't get the effect of the boundary layer and, and the fact that the, the air is moving up over the wing. Those things can make a huge difference in terms of the effect of the impact. So they're not real world conditions. In this case, the drone was still and the airplane flew into it. So it's a whole different situation, whole different situation. And we can learn a lot from it. And what we've learned from it is regulators have no grasp on this problem, no grasp at all. And therefore they just go overboard and try and regulate us out of the airspace, which means it's not about safety. In fact, in the UK, they've even admitted it's not about safety. Brave people in the UK, but you know, the rest of the world seems to be carrying, was it the UK? No, I think it's actually, anyway, a couple, might've been UK or USA. Anyway, one of the airspace regulators said, this isn't about safety. It's about security and privacy. It might, yeah, actually, that might've been the USA, but anyway, it doesn't matter. They're admitting, they're admitting we're not talking safety here. So come on, get on board guys risk assessment before you start rolling out any new regulations or you're not going to have any way of convincing people that those regulations are reasonable. A good example, um, we could save thousands and thousands of lives a year by reducing the open road speed limit to 30 miles an hour. We could do it, we'd save lives, but the cost, the, the, the effect of that would be too great. Too great. We can't, it would take so long to get from place to place if you were restricted to 30 miles an hour. So we say it's worth the risk for the benefit. And in the case of recreational multi rotor drones and model aircraft, what risk? So just let us carry on. Let us enjoy our hobby without trying to get us out of the sky so your Google mates and DHL and, and Amazon can enjoy or turn that airspace into money. That's it. Anyway, so um, thank you for watching. Thank you to my Patreon supporters. Give me the the freedom to make videos like this. And now I've got lots of stuff to get on with. Got some review stuff coming up on RC Model Reviews. You'll want to see that because it's really cool stuff. Some of it is, some of it's not. Go and watch, you'll find out in the next few days. Thanks for watching guys. Back to work. Bye for now.